Lester, and today I'll be interviewing political science professor Maria Popova of McGill University on the situation in the Ukraine and how it has transformed into the crisis in Crimea. So we'll be asking some contextual questions and then really getting down to the meat of the issues. Welcome, Professor Popova. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So the first question we have for Professor Popova today is, what are the historical factors that have led to the crisis in Crimea? Why is Russia doing this now? Really, the central uh, historical fact that's relevant today is that Crimea was transferred from the Russian um, Soviet Socialist Republic to the Ukrainian uh, Soviet Socialist Republic by a somewhat arbitrary decision uh, by Khrushchev in uh, 1954. Uh, so that basically is now being revisited. So why now? Why has Russia decided to act now and try to take over Crimea? One explanation uh, that Russia has sort of tried to, uh, to push as a justification here is that after the, um, the change in government in Kiev in February of, uh, of this year, um, Russian speakers in Crimea are very concerned about their uh, position within uh, Ukraine uh, that now has um, a government uh, that potentially could, uh, could limit uh, the rights of Russian speakers, so that's why Russia is intervening. Another possibility um, is that Russia was worried about the fate of their military base in uh, Crimea that they were leasing from Ukraine, continuing to lease it from a now uh, hostile Ukrainian government um, may not have been um, feasible. So um, that's another possibility, but also there's a possibility here that there has been a change in uh, the way in which the Russian uh, regime under Putin sees its role in its former sphere of influence. And that we are now witnessing the beginning of a new uh, period in Russian foreign policy where Russia is going to be a lot more assertive with all of its uh, former uh, satellites. So we've seen that there has been a referendum held as to whether uh, Crimea should separate from the Ukraine and join Russia. And the, the results were largely in favor of joining Russia. How much can we trust these election results, if at all? We can't really trust the results. We already know that, the, that two groups within Crimea, the Crimean Tatars that make up about 12% of the population, and the ethnic Ukrainians living in Crimea were definitely against uh, joining Russia. So it is sort of mathematically impossible uh, to obtain 97% at 82% turnout when about 40% of the population is known to be against. This doesn't mean that if the referendum had been held uh, with more preparation, with uh, observers, um, so that we could obtain real results, it, it is still possible that a majority of Crimeans would have voted to uh, join Russia, but that majority would have been much smaller than 97%. Okay, so you seem to be very concerned about it as well. You and 300 other scholars started a petition to call for the governments of the world to act. What motivated you to start this petition and to make it such a large effort? Well, um, at this point, it's upwards of 400 uh, scholars from 40 different countries who signed the petition, and I think it, it um, really indicates that uh, Julia Johnson and I sort of articulated a consensus position here among um, most uh, scholars who study uh, the region. The consensus position is basically that um, you could not uh, hold a referendum um, on such a short notice in the presence of military occupation uh, that basically it is, it, it's, um, it's not a good idea to set this as an international precedent. The goal of this petition was to sort of uh, point out what academics studying the region really think about uh, the situation and how it unfolded. Speaking of what an academic thinks about the situation in the region, this crisis has been described as Europe's most pressing issue in the 21st century. Do you agree with this? And if you do, why? I would agree with this. I mean, the century is, uh, is young, so we've had only 15 years. This is definitely the, uh, 
the biggest crisis in in Europe, in uh, for sure, in the in the twenty first century. It's important um, to uh, to see how it unfolds and how the different uh, parties to it are going to react and how they're going to move forward because there is a danger that this crisis uh, will really trigger sort of a new Cold War type uh, period in which uh, Russia is pitted against uh, Europe and, uh, and North America and, and obviously we, want, we all want to see this uh, not happen. All right, thank you so much for your time, Professor Popova. Stay tuned for, to the Political Bouillon for more news articles and videos as we follow the Crimean crisis.